Another major crop for the tribe is bamboo. Unique to the Upper Thani are the simple and sturdy bamboo houses they live in. Zero Village comprises of rows of bamboo houses that together make the largest bamboo village in the world, and one where almost every house looks alike. Perhaps this is a subtle message in social leveling. Bamboo is a most versatile resource. It's greatly valued among the Apatani people. Almost every family has its own nursery of bamboo plants, where they grow a unique species that was imported from Central Asia centuries ago. Bamboo is used not only for building, but also for cooking, eating, and basket making. By growing their own bamboo in private reserves, the Apatani are able to quickly harvest bamboo when required for construction or in the rare event that a fire guts a portion of their village. This practice was designed so as not to destroy their local forests. It seems the Apatani may have an important message in sustainable agriculture and environment-friendly practices for the rest of the world. Either way, the Apathani have made rice and bamboo an essential part of their lives in consumption and trade. Much like their look and their cash crop, the Apathani's games can be just as unusual to say the least. Rat hunts are another curious part of Apathani life. The entire process is a community affair with all the young males joining into the group effort. Rats are smoked out of their underground homes captured and killed. On the occasion that a fleeing rat manages to bite one of the hunters and draw blood, a chunk of the rat's hair is applied to the injured finger in what appears to be a tribal remedy. The day's catch is then carefully and lovingly stashed away in a carry bag. Later the rats are skewered and roasted over a small spit and the community partakes of their evening snack. <laughs> A group of Apatani hunters sets out into the thick forests above Pasighat in search of a variety of possible quarries. Armed with machetes and muzzle-loading guns, the men have shot a macaque. Any Arunachali male will tell you that hunting and cooking over an open fire is one of their favorite pastimes. They proceed to cook within the forest over an impromptu campfire. The meat is cooked using hollow bamboos and plantain leaves. Of course, the remaining skull and bones make for a grisly sight. Next day, the men have scored even bigger. A large male wild boar has been killed. Despite it weighing more than 100 kilograms, one of the hunters manages to carry it back to the forest camp. This will provide them with enough meat for the rest of the hunt and for some to take back home to their families. They cook the boar's meat over a slow fire and make bamboo baskets to carry the remaining meat back to their village, lining the basket with wild banana leaves. Of course, nothing accompanies a good pork-filled home meal better than some local brew to go with it. No evening meal or celebration in Arunachal is complete without the customary rice beer, apong. Here it's the women that are the brewmasters. Women sit together to knead a combination of rice and ash. The resulting mixture is placed to cook over a slow fire. Of course, no one would miss the opportunity of a slow fire, so they'll take advantage and add pork to the upper layer of rice and beer as well. Yeast is then added to accelerate the process of fermentation. Test a small sample, they add warm water from a top. The final product is filtered through the admixture, and the final liquid is the apong itself. Being a culture that's based on the oral telling of their history, the apong provides the right motivation to do so. Community meetings are popular and a necessity among the Arunachalis. Whether it's a grievance being voiced or mindless chatter among friends, the bonfire communion is a way of telling history for the Arunachalis.